Today we'll talk about database migrations using Prisma and how you can go from development to production. Let's see how we can do it. The focus of today's video is Prisma Migrate, which is a database migration tool. It enables you to keep your database schema in sync with your Prisma schema. So here in my project, I have a schema.prisma file where I'm defining my data model using Prisma's schema definition language. And I'm using Postgres, you'll see that I have a role. It can either have a value of admin or customer. I have a model called user. So this will create a table where each user has an ID, a name, an email, a subscribe, by default is true, make sure you subscribe, and then a bunch of other fields. Now, Postgres doesn't actually understand, you know, Prisma schema definition language. So we use Prisma Migrate to generate the equivalent SQL migrations and apply them to the database. So I already did that for this Prisma schema. And you'll see that in my Prisma directory, I have a directory called migrations. Inside it, I have this directory contains my migration and I called it init. And here I have a migration.sql file. So if I open this, and do a side-by-side -side comparison, you'll see that we have here, we're creating the rule, we're creating the table, and also creating an index. Now, this was actually automatically generated for us. We didn't have to you know, write this by hand, which is really convenient. And when it comes to generating migrations, we highly, highly recommend that you generate migrations and track them in version control because it is crucial for the entire workflow. And we're gonna see how right now. So this is the complete workflow when working with Prisma and you want to go from development to production. So let's start with development. So in development, you're going to have your own local Git branch. You're going to be working on the feature and this feature, let's say, introduces a schema change. So first you're going to modify your schema.prisma file and then you're going to generate the SQL migrations. And to do that, you use the Prisma migrate dev command. This command is supposed to be used in development. And what will happen is we're going to name our migrations and our migrations will be generated and applied to a development database. Now you can either have a local Postgres instance that's running with, you know, something like Docker or you have a local installation, or you can use a Neon branch. And a Neon branch is essentially an isolated copy of your data that you can use in your workflow. So here I have, you know, two branches, a main branch, which I'm using for production and a development branch. And this is where, you know, this is the branch that I, if, I just code against. So if I'm working on a new feature, I'll just use this branch. And if at any point I want to get the data from the parent, I can just choose reset from parent. Now, if you don't want to branch off of production and have production data to code against, you can essentially create another branch and use that branch as the base of development branches. And if you're working in a team setting, you should create a long lived branch for every developer on your team. So yeah, that's for development. And once we're happy with our changes, you're going to create a pull request. And this pull request will include the generated migrations. And when you open the pull request, you should have a CI CD workflow that gets triggered that will, you know, create a preview database. And if you're using Neon, that will be a branch and then apply the migrations that are found in code. And this is using the Prisma migrate deploy command. And what this command does is it just checks the migrations directory that, are, that is found in code and compares it against the database schema that, you know, like, you know, that is set. And if there are any differences, if there are any pending migrations, they will be applied to that database. And then once you do apply your migrations, you then do a preview deployment. So that's it for previews. If you have a fixed staging environment, it will be the same thing. Um, you can either, you know, create a Neon branch for, you know, staging and just reset it if you want. Or, you know, if you're using previews, you're just gonna create a branch on the fly. And I'm going to show you an example in a bit. And yeah, once you're happy with your changes, you're going to merge your pull request, which should kick off another CI CD workflow that will also apply the migrations to the production database or if you're using Neon, like your primary branch, and then you're going to do a production deployment. So 
yeah, that's how you go from development to production. Let's actually see it in action. So if I go back to my code and here, let's say I want to add a new column. So let's assume that I'm in my, you know, another Git branch. I'm gonna say, I want each user to have an age column. So let's say age, let's make it optional. Let's add a default value, for example. And uh, now I want to generate the migration. So I'll do npx prisma migrate dev. And this is an interactive command. So Prisma will ask me like, hey, what should be the name of this migration? Let's call it add age column, for example. And now you can see that applying migration and the following migrations have been created and applied, um, you know, from new schema changes. And if we actually open this directory, you'll see that we have it and we have the migration.sql which is just altering the user table and adding a new column. Now, once we open a pull request, here I'm using GitHub Actions, but of course you can swap it out with another CI/CD provider. For example, if you're using Vercel, we actually have a video uh, on using the Neon integration on Vercel, which just takes care of a lot of stuff. You should definitely check it out. But here for you know my GitHub Actions, I have three actions, one for deploying, doing preview deployments, one for de deploying production. And then once I actually merge, you know, and deploy to production, we have a workflow for cleaning up the old previews so that they don't, you know, accumulate. So let's take a quick look for, let's say, deploy preview. Here we have a single job called deploy preview. And this job, you know, has, uses a bunch of secrets that are set on the repo. And here we're just, Checking onto the code, setting up node, pmpm, which is what I'm using for this project. Then we're getting the git branch name, and we're going to use that as the name of the Neon branch. This way, in the Neon console, you'll be able to understand, you know, what this branch does. And then we're going to use, you know, the output of this step to create a branch. And this step here, we're using the Neon uh, create branch action. So this is a GitHub action that's provided by Neon that will create a branch for you. So here we're pressing the name, the project ID, and for the name we're saying it's gonna be preview slash PR, then the pull request number, and then the name of the Git branch. And yeah, then we run the migrations. So we're getting the database URL from the output of this create branch step, and then we're running the migrations against it. So we're just doing Prisma Migrate Deploy, and then I'm deploying here, and for this project, I'm using fly.io. And then once the deployment is finished, I actually comment on the pull request so that I have the preview URL and also the link to the Neon branch in the Neon console. So yeah, that's it for the deploy preview and for the deploy production. Uh, I'm, this runs you know, on push. The deploy preview happens on pull request. And when we push to main, what will happen is we just, again, check out into the code, set up node, install dependencies, and then run the migrations and do a production deployment. And that's it. This is how you can go from development to production using Prisma. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below or reach out in the Neon Discord community. We'd love to hear from you. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.